another episode of Jay Leno's Garage, a car we're featuring today, a 1970 Datsun 510. You know, if you're from my generation, the cool hot rod when you're in high school would have been like a 32 Ford or something like that. But if you're a millennial, it's probably one of these. These are just the coolest thing. They're light, they're fast, they're ultimately rebuildable. I mean, they're really cool, and for the longest time, you can get them for practically next to nothing. They've become quite valuable now. So I always like when I go to a car show and I'll see something like this, and I saw the owner, and I approached him, and I just liked it because it's not one of those money is no object builds. It's one of those, this is how much money I got, and this is what I'm going to build. And I think it's really cool. He did a nice job. Jonathan Lesnar. Jonathan, come on in here. Good to see you. Hey, Jay. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Appreciate yeah. It. This really stood out. We went to a car show at the Peterson Museum, and I walked over, and that's what's fun about having a show like this, say, hey, I'd like to feature this in my show. You want to do it? Oh, okay. So you come over. and uh, So tell us, how long have you had the car? So I acquired the car in December of 2015. Okay. So it's been a little over three years. It was basically a barnyard fine. Okay. Um, if I showed you a picture of how the car was when I actually purchased it, you would probably be a little bit shocked. Sure, so it, was, it wasn't a hot rod, it was just an old It wasn't. It wasn't a hot rod. Um, I found it on a gentleman's property. It went to paint and body to have the paint and body done. When I noticed it, it only had the engine bay done. Okay. So the engine bay was shaved, painted, and the motor was in there. For some reason, to be honest with you, I n honestly never thought I would like a khaki colored car, right. but I actually love how it turned out, especially with the black accents, with the flares and yeah. everything. Now I talked about my generation. Second hand cars were 57 Chevys, or if you're really cool, a 32 Ford. Although those were getting expensive by the time oh, yeah. I was old enough to drive. For you, was this the car, or you just happened to see this one and that was it? Growing up as a kid, I always wanted a Datsun 510. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah. And when I started looking, I couldn't afford it because yeah. I was a young kid. So I basically started saving money. I actually have a decent job now, so right. I saved money. And in the three and a half plus years, uh, my good friend Joe Mikos and I built the car. It actually just came down the night before I met you at the Peterson oh, for the right? Adam yeah. Carolla podcast. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, did you do this at your garage or his garage or where? So the paint was done in somebody else's garage. Well, I know that, but... But we basically put everything together and on it in either his garage or my garage, but mostly his. Well, that's what's fun, because we get a lot of cars here that are Lamborghinis and Paganis and all these, you know, money, no object, build kind mm -hmm. of things. And this is fun to see something that's fair to say done on a budget or a reasonable budget. Well... <laughs> you went over budget. I, I, I went way over well, budget. Well, you gotta go way over budget. It, it happens. It's, it's, you know, this is my passion. Um, yeah. I come, honestly, I come from the Honda world. Right. Uh, so I had a Japanese front end Integra mm -hmm. 2001 years ago. That's why you'll see kind of different more like Honda things associated with this car. Right. And I kind of tried to do the JDM style right, of right. the vehicle, so. Well, no, it's, it's very cool. It's Thank very you, cool. appreciate so it. So let's uh, tell us about the engine, it's stock. It's a swap, it's right. a KA24E. Okay. So it's the single cam KA24 out of the 89 to 91 240SX. Okay. So it's fuel injected. I have, it basically runs on a computer, which is under the passenger seat. And what kind of horsepower are you making with this? It's stock, so yeah. I would say maybe, you know, they rate them at like 145, 150 at the okay. crank, so, but you know, a fair amount more than the stock L16. Right, so. okay, okay, and it's probably, lighter than the vehicle came out of. Is it I still want to weigh it. I haven't yeah. weighed it yet, but I'm guessing I'm guessing it's sub 2,000 pounds as a guess. Sub 2,000 pounds? I, I would guess because there's not much to it. There's literally just the carpet, the roll bar, and two seats. You want to take it next door and we'll weigh it? Yeah. All right, let's see. And what do you say? Let's see it gets closer. What do you say the weight is? 1984. 1984. <laughs> So anything over that and you lose. I bust and you All keep right. the car, is that right. how it works? Yeah, that, that's yeah. how it works there, I'm right. sorry. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Okay, well, so you're guessing 1984. Yep. I'm guessing 2195. 2195. Okay, and we'll see who is closest <laughs> and who gets to keep the car. Well, let's open the hood. Let's take a look at the motor. Sure. Or the engine. You know, every time I say motor, Leno, motor's electric. You're an idiot. <laughs> no, sorry, but it's just force of habit. Okay. 
Well, nice installation. Look at that. I always like these braces. I always, I always get a kick out of those. Yeah, it really, this car's pretty rigid. I honestly never built it for show. Right. I built it for myself. Yeah, exactly. And I built it to drive the you know what out of it. Right, right. So it's the stock K24E as of right now. Eventually, yeah. I, you know, I would like to do a motor swap with either an SR or a KA24DE with the turbo. And but you got the aluminum aftermarket radiator. How about an aftermarket radiator? I was told by the guy that sold me the car, it's from a Miata. So that was modified to fit in here. And it's not uh, too thick. A lot of yes. times people make a mistake and put a radiator in that's too thick and the air can't move too fast enough. They wonder, why is my car overheating? I got this giant radiator. Well, it's cause the air can't get through it quick enough. You don't have much room uh, between the radiator and the motor on this KA swap. So what we had to do is use a puller fan. Right. So I had SPAL kind of work with me to figure out which one would put the most CFM in in order to keep the motor cool enough to run. And properly. which uh, brake and clutch master cylinder setup is that? What's that so the clutch is out of a 240 and the brake master cylinder is Willwood because yeah. I have all four Willwood disc okay. brakes. Yeah, well we mm -hmm. like them. We always use oh, them. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, we always, I, I always call these Monte Carlo bars because <laughs> the first time I ever saw one was on a Ford Falcon and yes. Ford called it the Monte Carlo bar because they raced the Monte Carlo rally. Right. So then in, in the comment section, people always get furious. But that was not the Monte Carlo bar. <laughs> so I just do that just to annoy people. And my favorite thing, and I love these more than anything, I love these Japanese mirrors mounted up front. My Lamborghini Miura, when I first got it, had a set of these and it went to a paint shop and the painter lost them. Okay. Anyway, so I never found them here, but I always like them up here because it gave you a much better field of vision. They're nice, but it takes a minute to get used to. Yeah, yeah. I'm still trying to find my way a little bit yeah, with them, yeah. especially backing up. And yeah, it's hard to get out. You have to adjust and go back, sit down again, and go back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Let's shut that hood. Again. Sure. What wheels are these? Were those not on it when I saw it? So they had, I hate to say it, but they had fake Watanabes on Ooh, there. Fake Watanabe. No one likes fake wheels. My good friend Chuck at Showstoppers USA in Burbank hooked me up with his friend Alan, who basically had these sitting around. Oh, okay. They were just sitting in the back of his garage. I went after work and headed to Valencia. So you stole go. them is what you're saying. You broke into I, shop I broke on a into Sunday. his yeah. shop on a Sunday and stole oh, okay. them. I actually just put these on yesterday oh, okay. and test fitted them. Um, I'm actually surprised. It's a 225, 45, 15, mm -hmm. but it actually clears the front. Yeah. So before with the fake wheels, they were 195, 50s, which I'm not a super fan of that stretch look. Um, I'm more about putting more wheel or more tire onto the ground. Now, did you have to cut the fender away or just put these? So the metal work from the fender was cut away oh, okay. a little bit and folded up. And then the, the body work guy and the paint guy did that. Okay. And this is like a matte finish, isn't it? It's a matte finish. Yeah, it's a matte finish. I was told basically there's, there's unfortunately no clear coat on it. Yeah. So I need to be very careful with that. Uh, I wasn't hey. super excited yeah. when I found out there wasn't a clear coat on it. And, and you've got obviously a nice roll cage in there, very smart, and that's probably 100 pounds? Probably. That's just a, a standard auto power roll bar, okay. uh, but I got what's called the optional bar that goes from this side top okay. down to there. Um, so it's just, it's just an extra part of rigidity for the Okay, for rear the car. seat is out, all that's out. Your that real rear seat's out. I have the, the deck lid and the back part, which is made by Techno Toy Tuning. They make these really nice aluminum pieces and then nice. in a wrinkle black, um, they powder coat them. Same with all the other panels and on I'm it glad and you didn't body paint the bumpers. I like the chrome bumpers. I like that period look. On I the like the chrome bumpers too, and I honestly wanted to use OEM bumpers, yeah, right. but the cost of chrome is absolutely insane. It is crazy. Uh, so I went with uh, the Fudo Fab ones, and uh, I think they look great. What, these are, this is not chrome. What is it? This, it's chrome, but oh, it's, yeah. it's a repop of okay. the OEM ones. Well, that looks good. Yeah. We look in, look inside the trunk. Oh, absolutely, there? absolutely. I like the stock tail lights too. I like them to look like what they're supposed to look like. I, uh, you're not going to like it then, because I actually have LED 
Uh, well, that's right. No, I'm talking about this. I mean, oh, okay. I mean visually. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, that's a big. You got a big battery in there. Well, I did the Optima battery. It's just a, a basically a, a battery holder that I found on eBay mm -hmm. actually, and then I had it powder coated black to just kind of go with the theme, and then I have the uh, again a Techno Toy tuning uh, block off for my gotcha. gas tank. Now, can't you just use one of your phony wheels as a spare? I can't. Why? Friends don't let friends rock fake wheels. Yeah, but friends don't like to, help, to go get their friends when they're stuck by the side of the road with no spare tire. That's very true. Yeah. And in that case, you just call AAA. All right, but then you still, then you got a flatbed, <laughs> and then you're still stuck. I mean, oh, you, you have to unfortunately. You know what I do? I would throw bed. the fake wheel in there and then cover it with that, uh, with that <laughs> car, cover. car cover, and then <laughs> nobody even know it's back there. That's true. That's but true. I'll get the weight up so it. I can win when I get my 2195. There you go. What did these weigh brand new, do you know? I think it was a little over 2,200 okay. as a guess. Okay. 22, 2,300. All right. Let's look at the gauges. Yes. So it's all, it's all set up, all wired. That is actually a piece that came from a gentleman in Australia. He actually custom hand makes those center consoles for the gauge pod. Right. And then my good friend Joe Mikos, who helped me build the car, put the um, the switches in on the bottom. You know, it's so funny. Now, from my era, you always went with a shorter gear shift lever because you could shift quicker. Why do you like the longer one? I like it being closer to the steering wheel, right. especially for like, it, you know, I will autocross and track this eventually. Right. So it has a B&M short shifter and then an extender on it, and then it has the Tomai shift knob. Oh, so okay. it's a little bit closer, but the B&M is super nice. Right. If you haven't felt a B&M in a, in a Datsun 510, they're really tight, well, really nice Well, hopefully I get shifter. to feel in a few minutes. You will. You okay. absolutely will. And this is a five-speed, correct? This is a five-speed with the KA24E. Um, and then the Recaros are old-school Recaros. They're called Harriers. Right. And they're the Recaro gradation. I actually found these by chance in Thailand and had them imported over here. How to do you the find them States. in Thailand? Are you walking around Thailand? I have friends that use social media. Oh, I'm old and not cool, so I don't use it. My friend found it and I said, please contact him and tell him to take my money. Okay, so we have the stock steering rack. Stock steering custom rack. Custom steering wheel. Custom, it's a Momo Monte Carlo steering okay. wheel. Um, and Stock gauge pack for for tack and, uh, yes. and speedometer. Yes. The only new gauges are these extra ones here. Correct. Correct. Okay, right here. Now, do you have heater and defroster hooked up, or is all that taken out? The heater, it actually works. So oh, okay. uh, we actually just rebuilt it, so it actually looks really nice and actually spits really hot air out. I'm just so. trying to find out if some of the heavier stuff still in there to see if I can win this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, okay. All right, well, very cool. Let's uh, bring it next door, see what it weighs, and find out if I'm driving my own brand new 510. All right, let's lower it down on these wheel weights. It's the moment of truth. Okay, will we keep the car or will I be the owner of a brand new 510? Let's see what we got here. Total, 2,230 pounds. I'm very sorry. Yeah. You wonder how I got all these cars? Knowledge. This is how it's, no, no, no. <laughs> this is how it's done. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll let you I keep hope you the enjoy car. it. I'll let you keep the car. <laughs> but there's, it. you know, just so many things that add weight you don't even think. But Because um, when they weigh with, uh, at the factory, there's no oil, there's no gas. You have a full tank in this? Uh, a little over half. A little over half. Mm -hmm. So figure, what's gas? Six pounds a gallon? Six pounds a gallon. So, okay, so, I mean, you might, it might be, it's probably 2,000, 2000 but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, let's take it for a ride. and. We're both carrying a little extra weight anyway, so it's not going to We'll add a little difference. bit more weight to it. A little bit more weight's not going to do anything. <laughs> All right, let's take it for a spin. Let's do it. you build yourself a lot of times more fun than just having some supercar right because there's a pride in it and you know every nut and bolt on it and, and with these like with the older motors it's so easy because it's not 
you know, with like the newer motors and everything, they put all that plastic around it. Right, right, so you have right. to get, you know, you have to take off 20 bolts before you even get like to the right, right. part of the motor that you like want to work on and right, everything. Exactly. Which it's nice, like it dresses up like your engine bay and everything, but it doesn't, you know, I don't know, it's it's an extra 20 bolts or whatever that you need to well, like take off and everything. This is almost everything. 50 years old. Yeah, yeah. This is what I built this car to do, yeah. drive it. And so. it puts a smile on other people's faces too. But it's always interesting what cars are iconic for each generation. Right. My generation was the 32 Ford and more recently the 57 Chevy. Yep. I don't think any young kids today really care about a 57 Chevy. Right. Because they don't really have any connection with it. You know? Right. You don't have many miles on this build at all, do you? Not at all. I thought my buddy Joe that actually helped me build the car. He's got more miles on it than I do. Yeah, yeah. Tell me why you chose those Japanese mirrors. I like them because I just remember them from back in the day. I'm really big into like the Japanese kind of JDM culture. Right. I eventually would love to go visit Japan. It's on my bucket list. But they're just very Japanese style and it was looks over function yeah. in a way. But now they're actually really growing on me. And then I actually drove this car last weekend and then I put it back in my garage, you know, like what you were saying, go around the corner twice, put it back in the garage. And I hopped in my Tacoma. I have a like two inch lifted Tacoma. It was really weird, actually. Well, you saw my Mazda <laughs> Cosmo, that has these mirrors on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you really, once you start driving them, they really, you really start understanding them and then you see, you know, the, the progression of the cars next to you and you get a hang of like how yeah. the mirrors are working and everything like what to look for and stuff so and this the vehicle is always going to be in progress isn't it do you think oh, it it's always going to ever progress. be finished i doubt it yeah. I, tr I highly 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 doubt it like what's the most desirable motor you would want for this I really think like an SR20 DT, but there's already a lot of those out there and I kind of like being different. I'm kind of leaning towards the KA24DE, so the dual overhead cam, and then turbo that. Right, right. And then get the extra 0.4 half a liter almost and then, you know, put it back. Um, so. That goes good. Mike Tolley did the exhaust. Yeah. He's up at San Jose. And he, uh, he was actually the head fabricator for a company called Comtech. Yeah. So Comtech did a lot of like aftermarket parts for the older 90s NSXs. Right. Um, so he did the exhaust and it's it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And you could like look under and it's all, you know, Mandro bed, all stainless. He did a really, really nice job on it. Would you ever use any non-Japanese pieces? Yeah. Well, the steering wheel. The steering, you know, the steering wheel's a Momo, so technically it's Italian. Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, I mean, I don't mind like not using like Japanese parts as long as they're yeah. you know, quality parts, you know, such as like, you know, the Willwood brakes and everything. But my main thing was really just trying to get, you know, some really nice wheels, which obviously these Wahanabes are, in my opinion, the, the quintessential yeah, wheel yeah. for a 510. Uh, I mean, so. The Caros are nice. Usually I don't like with Caros because I'm in like this butter crunching. Yeah. Stitching. But yeah. these are actually quite nice. Yeah. These are these are from the 90s uh, and they're the standard Mercaro SRD seats yeah. um, that they've been making tried and true for years. It just makes me laugh when you say from the 90s because to me the 90s are last Thursday. Really. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I feel like it was just not that long ago that we were in the 90s as well. Here we are coming up on 2020 in another year. So when you go on a date, do you take this car? Oh, I really doubt that. Yeah. I don't think they would enjoy. They'd be like, what yeah. is this seatbelt contraption? And once I get more familiar with the car a little bit more, I'll start doing like some autocross events. Yeah. Try to hit yeah. a track or two. You always feel like you're in Tokyo Drift or something when you drive this. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but my friend Joe has told me that it's pretty easy to slide the rear end out. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Let's find out. No, it's not <laughs> How many miles on this motor when you put it in? I don't know. Yeah. Because the the person I bought the car off of basically took this motor out of a wagon that he went and bought and then put it in this car. 
and basically had the uh, the engine bay completely done uh, and just the motor in it. I see why you like the gear shift up here. It does it's, fall readily to hand. As it's, they say. it's it's nice because if you're if you're holding the steering wheel and then it's it's not too far right, of right. a of a move for your hand to downshift really quickly in case well, you, you know would you ever do an automatic or you always a manual shift manual yeah, you got manual you know so. I got a great book it was published in the 70s and 80s maybe even the 90s about what's into swappable among American cars. Uh-huh. You know, a Chevy transmission, this will fit a Plymouth, will fit a... And it was all, uh, I forget who makes it. It's an inter interchangeable part. You know, it'd be fun to have one for Japanese stuff. Yeah. And European stuff as well. Brake boost wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. 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 Because it takes the, some pressure to stop it. Yes. Yes. The manual brakes take a minute to get used and to. And if you got a corn on your foot, ow, ow, it's going to be a turn. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it takes. It definitely takes a minute to get used to. Well, Jonathan, I want to thank you and Joe for bringing this by. Oh, absolutely. I, I like that never-ending project. Yes. I like yes. just kind of things that just continue to evolve and evolve. And who knows, maybe I might see in four or five years, you might have a whole different motor in this thing. Absolutely. So it's, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun and it's a great car. I mean, this is the 57 Chevy of the millennial generation. Right, you know? right, absolutely. I mean, it's really cool to watch it move at 20 years ahead to each car, you know? Right. Cars that weren't thought of much when they were new, they were just nice mom commuter cars and then they become like the cool hot rods, you know? Yeah. So yeah. let's see what she does. Hey. See you guys next week!